afternoon, Malta. Um, we are in uh, uh, the uh, Najah National University in, in Nablus. Um, I would like to say something about this university. This is uh, we're in a, the new building of Al Najah, which is positioned on top of a hill of the Beit Hazan Hills in, in Nablus. And when you look out of our, our offices, you can see the valleys, the terrains, very rugged Mediterranean landscape, I would say. Very typical. But <coughs> here, when you look from the hills, you can see settlements all around Nablus, and Jewish settlements which have been growing around Nablus. And these are not the typical Jewish settlements which you would find in the occupied Palestinian territories. Normally, um, the uh, settlements would start with a few caravans which are positioned on a hill and then they start growing. The buildings, the constructions, they start growing, pushing the Arabs, pushing the Palestinians um, away from, from, from their towns, from their villages. Um, and settlements are a big contentious issue as we're going to be discussing today. Um, I, I heard Shafiq Jamus here um, speaking in another occasion and he compared the situation in, in the West Bank to a Swiss cheese. He said, if I remember correctly, it's like a big Swiss cheese with a lot of holes inside and the holes are the settlement, the settlements which keep growing, uh, which have been growing along the years. Um, one, one author, uh, Honek Parnas, actually observed how in the past 60 years you had Zionist politics which treated Palestinians like environmental nuisances, he called it, he called it that needs to be swept away. And in, in Nablus and um, in my experience here, since I have been here, I could feel this, I could see this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, settlers go to extremes to remove inconvenient Arab residents um, and you hear some very chilling accounts of what people suffer, what our students actually um, suffer. Did we lose the connection or are we still here? Ask him for, uh, are we connected? Are we connected? I think, I think we, we were cut. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We were not So basically you teach in mm -hmm. No, I used to teach at uh, York University in Toronto. Uh, about Canada? In Canada, yes. I've been to York. I've been to York. Yes. Yes. Well, I don't think there is a big difference in ages. But uh, I went to work at the uh, Palestine Embassy in Ottawa mm. during the war of 1982-85 with uh, Abdullah Abdullah, who's now the ambassador to Beirut. And ever since then, he is um, an amazing man. I know, he's, he's good. I know. Yeah. And uh, we worked well together. Yeah. But uh, ever since then, um, I have not had teaching at the university. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been living in uh, Canada? I, I, I switched to, uh, to the University of Quebec Montreal because it was oh, the most progressive university in Canada at the time. Yeah. And I really connect by themselves. Uh, mm. So I live in Montreal now. That's right. They are trying to connect. He's the chief judge of the <laughs> and uh, he's been visiting, uh, he has visited Canada like, uh, uh, I think, 18 months ago. The, uh, like, they visited the judicial council. I am very glad that I'm not going away from uh, Palestine next week. 
You're making me paranoid. He said to me, I love the place.
for this opportunity. Uh, <coughs> well, what is Palestine's position? This is a very hard question, but still a simple one. Uh, Palestinians claim they have a state. We always claim we have a state. We definitely had a state in the past, and our, our efforts uh, aim at rebuilding that state again. Uh, well, basically, until this moment, uh, Palestine is not recognized by the United Nations as an international organization, as, a, as neither a state or as a member state in the UN. But it is, it is at least recognized as an independent state by two -thirds of the interna more than two-thirds of the international community. We are talking about over 132 countries, which is basically more than two-thirds of the, of the, of the world's uh, uh, states. And those include Malta. Malta well, yeah, those, those include Malta. Uh, those include uh, <laughs> most of the uh, most of uh, South American countries, mo most of Asian, African, and some of the European countries. Uh, basically, what what we want now, uh, if we talk about the Palestinian uh, statehood bid, uh, we aim at getting a recognition by the whole international community as. Uh, an independent state, first of all, that is under occupation, a state, full state, that is under occupation, instead of this calling Palestine disputed lands by Zionists by, and by their allies. Uh, second, we aim at becoming uh, a full member in the, in the United Nations, which is, which is a right more than a privilege, I would say. Uh, well, I, I'd like to talk more, more about how we got into this situation in Palestine. We were talking about the Swiss cheese with holes. In fact, you know, 
no matter how, how, how you imagine the, situ the situation in Palestine, I can simply say it's worse. It is simply worse. You can find settlements on almost every hill now in the, in the, in the West Bank. Gaza Strip is, uh, is under siege, military siege, for, for over, is it like uh, seven, eight years now. So we're talking about a huge problem for, for both like uh, the Palestinian people and for the, the future of the Palestinian state. Uh, how, did you, how did you get into this situation? Well, first of all, uh, I have to talk a little bit about history and connect this to the, to the legal aspect. Uh, first of all, Palestine was uh, part of the Ottoman Empire uh, and it was, it was put under a British mandate in 19, around 1920 by a decision of the, by the League of Nations. But there, there was something weird about that uh, decision, I would say, about the, 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 the League of Nations resolution, which is, instead of shaping the mandate to help the Palestinians to become fully independent and to, 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 to obtain their, like, let's say, self-governance, self uh, it simply adopted the, Bal the, the Balfour promise, which is basically establishing a nation for the Jewish people in Palestine and completely neglecting the rights of the indigenous people of Palestine. This was the weird part that never happened before in international law. All the countries that has been uh, under mandate has, has become independ independent states now. For example, Jordan was one of the states under mandate, Morocco was one, Algeria was one, Egypt was one, and they are all now independent states governed by their own people, except Palestine. That decision adopted the Balfour Promise and considered the Jewish people around the world to be the native, just something like the native people of this land, neglecting the, the rights of every non-Jewish in Palestine, simply adopting the Zionist view. Uh, so here, here where the Palestinian problem started, I would say. Now, in 1947, there was the partition plan for Palestine, which basically granted over 55% of the lands of Palestine, of the historical Palestine, to the Jewish people who, in fact, were less than one third of the population. So this this was, in fact, some some I would say some aggressive act by by the United Nations then against Palestinians. Later, in 1967, Israel did not as as a state now. It did not, uh, I would say, uh, it did not. <coughs> reserve its borders or, 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 or feel, feel satisfied with, with its borders. In fact, it attacked several Arab states, including the remaining Palestinian lands. In 1967, they occupied the West Bank, Eastern Jerusalem, uh, Gaza Strip, uh, al uh, Julan in Syria, uh, Sinai in, uh, in Egypt. So basically, the state of Palestine was no longer on the map after 1967. Now, Palestinians and, and several international resolutions, binding ones by the Security Council, for example, the Resolution 242, which basically talks about the 1967 borders and that a Palestinian state shall be, shall, shall be um, created on these lands, and, is, and these lands are considered occupied by the Israeli uh, state. Well, since 1967 till 1993, uh, the remaining Palestinian lands were controlled by the Israeli military administration. They were not, we were not given the rights of Israeli citizens. Neither were we given our independent state. So this, is the, this, this was our problem during the years from 1967 till 1993. And basically, till this moment, like this problem has not ended. We have not become Israeli citizens with full rights in a democratic state, uh, a dual ethnic democratic state. And on the other hand, we did not become an independent state. We did not get our right to, to govern ourselves. And Israel is, is keeping this status quo, which is basically, Palestinians, you're not getting a state, and you're not becoming our citizens. It is, it is, it is a recipe to, to deprive you of every right you have, telling you that you're not my citizen, but you're not a citizen of an independent state. And this is what we're, we're trying to avoid here. Now, Palestinians have two visions. And I think the, mo the first one is more popular, while the second one is becoming more realistic with time. The first one is a two-state solution. This is what you hear all the time on news. 
uh, establishing a Palestinian state that has normal and peaceful relations with Israel, establishing this state on the lands of the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and Eastern Jerusalem. Well, the other, uh, this, well, this, I would say, this vision is more popular in the international community at the moment, and this is the official position of the Palestinian National Authority at the moment. Uh, and this is why we've seen uh, negotiations going on for, for years now. Uh, it's all about the two-state solution. Uh, of course, this vision has its support in the, in, the, in, the, in the international law. The other vision is establishing a dual ethnic democratic state for both Muslims, Jewish, and Christian on the historical land of Palestine, which is basically now West Bank, Gaza Strip, Eastern Jerusalem, and Israel, establishing one state. Well, this vision, till this moment, is less popular, I would say, especially by Zionists, because their vision is, in the first place, establishing a purely Jewish state, something that is impossible to happen if we have, a one, if we have one democratic state established here. So, but I also said that this resolution is becoming more realistic with time, and this is true because of the Israeli unilateral actions on the ground. Now, if we talk about establishing a Palestinian state in the West Bank, Gaza, and Eastern Jerusalem, we're talking about around a million Israeli settlers in these regions, in the three regions. Well, basically in the West Bank and Eastern Jerusalem. Around a million Israelis living among us. Illegally, of course. And at the same, at the same time, there is, there is an Arab-Israeli population at the moment, like basically native Palestinians who became Israeli citizens inside Israel, who are now uh, around 1.5 million Palestinians. So in fact, the populations are, are, are getting mixed. Of course, I'm, um, there, is, there is always a reservation that I always express, which is the 1 million Israelis in the West Bank and Eastern Jerusalem are here illegally, because and the, the international law defines settlements as illegal. Uh, so basically, these are the two resolutions. Uh, the second one is not adopted by the Palestinian National Authority. This is one. It is not adopted by most of the international community till this moment. And it is completely rejected by Israel as, as a Zionist state. Because it is against the, the, the I would say, the, the, the ground, uh, the, against the ideological grounds that Israel was established on. Israel aims to be a purely Jewish state, something that can never happen in a one-state solution. It is harder to, to, to achieve this one, but I think, anyway, it's, this is what's happening. This is what's happening on the ground. Thank you. Now, um, thank you for that very interesting um, really contextualized issue and um, what we're talking about here inside is one of the uh, people who advocate the one state solution, I have to say, you support, you're one of, you, 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 uh, Shafiq has just said that there are few people who speak about it, and you are one of them. So can you give us the reasoning behind your, your idea? Um, By the way, I have to say, because I did not see it earlier, that you are a lecturer in political and environmental geogra um, geography in, from the Department of Geography. Um, first of all, thank you, Doctor. Um, uh, and I'm really glad that we're doing this video conference with Malta. It's a small place, uh, you know, very active on the international level, even though much more uh, proportionate to its size, you know. And I know that there is this uh, diplomacy institute that uh, many Palestinian diplomats studied and trained in, 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 in Malta. I think Institute of Diplomacy in, in the University of Malta. Um, I speak here as a political geographer, but also I speak as a political activist and a human rights activist that have been active uh, since the mid-70s, and also as a, as, as a person that have gone through the whole spectrum of Israel aggression. Uh, I've been um, uh, injured uh, in student demonstrations in the uh, 1982, and then I was imprisoned, uh, and was tortured by the Israeli uh, state, uh, and also, uh, my mother was, uh, was assassinated in 2002 by the Israelis for her uh, political activities in support of the Palestinian Intifada and, and so on. Um, as a political geographer, I would like to say that, uh, first of all, to diagnose the situation we're living in, uh, which uh, uh, Mr. Shafiq, uh, Mr. Jamus have started. 
In my view, uh, I cannot be apologetic. I have to say things as they are. Israel is, is a settler colonial state, and Israel was built on the expense uh, 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 on disposition of the Palestinian people. Um, you know, in 1948, uh, when Israel was established, Israel and, and the, the, the Zionist gangs were able to ethnically cleanse 75% of the Palestinian population, leading to uh, close to 800,000 Palestinian refugees scattered all over the Middle East and also inside Palestine. In 1948, Israel occupied 78% of the Palestinian areas as defined by the British Mandate, or what we call British Mandate Palestine, as Shafiq said. So the area that was occupied in 1948 was 78%, leaving 22%, which were later became to be known as the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, so they basically, they occupied 22% more than the 56% or 55% that was allotted to them uh, by the United Nations uh, resolution, partition resolution of November 29th, 1947. In 1967, Israel occupied the rest of the, uh, uh, the area of British Mandate Palestine in its borders. Uh, so now all of Palestine uh, is occupied, 100% occupied. Uh, 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 so I don't, when I refer to occupation, I don't only refer to occupation in, in the areas of the West Bank and Gaza, but I refer to occupied Palestine as the national territory of Palestinians that, as, as uh, uh, again Mr. Shivik has uh, said, uh, were denied the right of self-determination. The right of self-determination was granted to us supposedly by the League of Nations in 1920, uh, within the, uh, the confines of the, uh, uh, the, um, the text of the, uh, the mandate. But it was a very weird mandate because they have included the text of the Balfour Declaration or the Balfour Promise within, within the decree of the mandate. That means that Britain took on its shoulders the implementation of the Jewish national homeland in Palestine within the uh, um, uh, time frame of the mandate. So by the time 1947 came, you know, the, uh, um, we, uh, 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 the British have facilitated thousands and thousands of Jewish uh, immigrants coming into Palestine and made it uh, almost impossible for the creation of a viable Palestinian state uh, within the right of self-determination. So now we are faced with a situation from 67 up until now, after 43 years of occupation of West Bank and Gaza, we have the culmination of what I call a full-fledged apartheid system. So we have a military occupation. On top of that, we have a, a full-fledged apartheid system, whether in the West Bank and Gaza or whether uh, inside Israel or the Zionist entity against uh, uh, Palestinians living inside the confines of the, uh, the Zionist entity or what, we, what they call Israel. So um, having said that and having uh, uh, and taken into account the uh, the demographic, first the political, the economic, the cultural, the demographic, and the urban realities that Israel created on the ground. So what do we have? And from there, we should basically try to see what is feasible, the two-state solution or the one-state solution, and that satisfies the aspiration of the Palestinian national movement and, uh, and Palestinian rights. Uh, first of all, um, a, 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 all throughout the occupation, Israel continued the building of Jewish colonies. I don't even, uh, in the political uh, geography sense, we should not even call them settlements because they are basically colonies. They are colonizing the West Bank. And we have uh, uh, now, as uh, Shafiq said, uh, half a million settlers in the West Bank and close to uh, uh, 300,000, 400,000. Uh, so almost a million settlers in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Uh, and now with the building of the Aberfide Wall that uh, took uh, uh, more percentage of the West Bank, and with the, uh, uh, with the control of Israel over the Jordan Valley, which constitute 28% of the West Bank area, uh, and with the areas of the settlements, Palestinians are left only with uh, basically 12% of the total area of Palestine. So that is not uh, uh, feasible to create a viable, contiguous Palestinian state within those confines. So basically, Israel, by its actions, have made the two-state solution almost impossible to implement. So now more and more people are reverting back to the vision of the one-state solution. This is the vision that was initially uh, presented by the PLO as the solution for the Palestine question in 1974 in the speech, in the, uh, in the famous speech of the uh, uh, PLO uh, leader, 
uh, President uh, 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 Yasser Arafat in the United Nations. He said, let us build a secular democratic state for Muslims, Christians, and Jews, basically a country of all of its citizens uh, uh, that does not discriminate based on uh, ethnicity, uh, 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 religion, and so on and so forth. This was the what uh, Arafat called it the olive branch. But he had a rifle in, in the other hand. He said, I have an olive branch and a rifle. The rifle, if you reject this, then we are going to continue our armed struggle in order to liberate Palestine. The BLO, after many years of struggle, and because the international community rejected this, I believe, a peaceful credo, a peaceful solution, uh, because of the stupidity of the international community, um, now, uh, and the arrogance of the superpowers uh, and, and, and Europe, uh, and they supported blindly the Zionist uh, project, now we reach to this uh, uh, situation where even after the BLO accepted the Oslo, the Oslo process, which was uh, basically a promise to go on to an interim period of five years, at the end of which we will implement the uh, two-state solution that Israel was not sincere in implementing and continued building facts on the ground. So basically, they sabotaged the two-state solution. Now we're, we're faced after 20 years, after 20 years of a peace process after Oslo, 20 years, we have a peace process without peace, and we basically we have, again, as I said, a full-fledged military occupation and a full-fledged apartheid system. So what's uh, the, the, the question that uh, presents itself now? What can we do? Now, many, many people, as uh, <coughs> the, the, uh, uh, yeah, Carmen, uh, Dr. Carmen have said, that I am one of the uh, proponents or, or, or advocates of the one-state solution. Basically, many people call it as unrealistic, but I say this is a dream and a vision that we have to work, to work for. It's not a switch-on switch on solution. Nobody says saying that. At the same time, apartheid, the way they, they developed it, it was not a switch-on, switch-off. It took many, many years for Israel to occupy, destroy, and implement apartheid. So to, to de dismantle apartheid and to to deconstruct our fight and to replace it with a secular democratic state for all, this needs struggle. This needs, uh, 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 you know, sincere efforts uh, locally, nationally, inter regionally, and internationally. And this is the vision we are bringing. Now, there are many, many people who are basically articulating this vision. I have a document here you can also check on the internet, a state of all of its citizens, and it's signed by uh, Palestinian intellectuals and also Israeli intellectuals and academics. Now maybe there's like 50 signatories to it. And it has actually, it spells out the details of this vision. It's not only now as just a simple idea, but basically what we're gonna do and how to implement this vision in terms of what kind of constitution, uh, what kind of economic, uh, you know, what kind of uh, uh, cultural uh, settings and so on and so forth, uh, and how uh, the, uh, the legal settings of, 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 of this vision. Uh, how to implement it, the last thing I would like to say, uh, so I won't talk, uh, consume too much time and maybe uh, leave some time for discussion. Uh, most of the people who are supporting the one state solution are also supporting uh, an international campaign of BDS, what we, what we call the boycott, divestment, and sanctions against the Israeli state. Because we see a lot of parallels between what's happening in Palestine and what's hap what happened in during, uh, in South Africa during the apartheid regime. Uh, um, we see a lot of similarities, a lot, a lot of resemblance, and be, uh, when we implemented the BDS movement, and I struggled with the South Africans for many years, from 1985 to 1994, I struggled with the South Africans to, to be able to destroy apartheid, and we did, we would succeed. The international community, first of all, implemented, uh, uh, you know, uh, started the divestment uh, uh, campaign uh, uh, against, uh, 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 South Africa and withdrew the investments there. Uh, boycotts were initiated against South Africa, but also sanctions by the, inter uh, by, the, by the governments of the world because the governments of the world have spelled it out. Apartheid is a crime against humanity. And what's happening in Palestine is an apartheid. It's not even Israel. It is an apartheid situation. Therefore, what's happening in Palestine is a crime against humanity, and the international community should take its responsibility. So. Finally, I would like to say that the, uh, the BDS movement is gaining impetus, is gaining momentum, and I, I, I believe that this is the way to go, coupled with, uh, with struggle, non-violent struggle on the ground by the Palestinians and their supporters, 
and also by diplomatic initiatives to delegitimize uh, the Israeli state as a normal state, uh, as, as an only democracy in the Middle East, even though Israel is a rogue state, is a terrorist state, is a state that was built on the ethnic cleansing of Palestinian, and it's an apartheid state and should be treated as such. Enough is enough. Um, as I, get, I told you, I speak as an academic, but also an activist, and you can see a lot of passion is in, in my words. Uh, and um, uh, I would like to stop here and maybe uh, elaborate more on what we are doing to implement this vision. And if you need any more information about what we're doing, we can share it with you. Um, Thank you. The parallelism with South Africa is a continuous theme. Um, actually, the person who is deemed to be able to unite Palestinians, the Fatah and Hamas group, is serving five lifetimes in prison. He's Marwan Barghouti, and he is deemed to be the Nelson Mandela of Palestine at the moment, from what I can get. And um, I would like and to... Many to others. Have many and many others. We have many Nelson Mandela's, because yes. we have, uh, like, uh, uh, tens of people who spent more than 35 years in jail. And Nelson Mandela spent 27. Now we have tens of people who spent more than 35 years. Dr. Ibrahim, um, what, what, what is your take to, to this discussion? Um, I know that you have studied uh, this, this issue of, of uh, nation, the Palestinian nationhood and the consolidation in the area quite deeply. Um, what is your position on this? I think you uh, posed the question to me earlier, how it can be that uh, Jewish people who have uh, undergone such uh, terrible repression in the past, especially in the Holocaust of Europe, could end up treating another people in such a terrible way. And uh, I'd like to point out, my parents come from uh, Poland, from Warsaw and Lublin in Poland, and each of them escaped from the ghettos that were set up uh, during the occupation by the Nazis there. And uh, the rest of their families were lost, even though they went back into the ghettos and uh, helped to uh, save a younger brother and a younger sister. So out of uh, those two families, which were very large, like the Palestinian families are now, uh, traditional families, four survivors out of perhaps 400. So in Poland, there was more than 90% of the Jewish population was uh, exterminated. exterminated, yes. And this was the goal of the Nazi uh, regime. Uh, there was two wars. One, the Nazi occupation of Europe, and there was a second war which was specifically against the, the Jewish and the Roma peoples, a war of extermination, a different kind of a war. Now, how could it be that the Jewish people are carrying themselves uh, in this manner and treating the Palestinians uh, as, as they are? The reason is, one, it is not the same people that are concerned here. For instance, of the Jewish refugees, my parents were refugees in the uh, Breslau refugee camp in Germany after the war. The uh, American occupation there, uh, they allowed the Zionists to come into the refugee camp to make propaganda to invite uh, the Jewish refugees to go to Palestine and occupy the land here. We are in Palestine. And, uh, most of the Jewish refugees refused uh, such an offer. My father refused for two reasons. One, he did not want to go to another war because he knew that he was being invited <coughs> to, to fight against the Palestinians and he didn't want to do so. And secondly, because he knew that the Zionists were uh, uh, secularists, anti-religious, and he was a religious traditionalist. He didn't want to uh, listen to uh, such an authority because it didn't hold any authority for him. So it took a year and finally they got a visa to go into Canada and uh, I was born, although I was conceived in a refugee camp, I was born in Toronto, Canada. And my first language was Yiddish, the Jewish language of Eastern Europe. And 52% uh, of the Jewish refugees chose to go to other countries and not to go to Palestine. Those that could not get a visa to go to the United States or to Canada felt they were obliged to go to uh, Palestine because it was the only site in which they were being invited to go to. So against their will, they came here, and they ended up being uh, a strata of the Israeli population that continues to live in poverty. The Holocaust survivors in Israel are treated like uh, lower class uh, citizens there. And uh, the leadership of the Zionist movement, the leadership of Israel, is composed more of the bourgeois and the petty bourgeois elements who come from Germany. In Germany, a uh, family uh, was uh, uh, like, um, um, there were 60,000 uh, German uh, uh, Jewish people were saved, you know, in negotiations with the Nazis by the Zionists. 
And uh, because they were Zionists, they were saved and they were allowed to leave Germany and they went to Palestine as a joint project of both the Zionist movement and the Nazi movement, unfortunately.